to see that at least some of you has been able to wake up after the sumptuous dinner last uh, evening, which we enjoyed very much, thanks to Heather and her hospitality. So I am going to share with you quite dramatic data, which, uh, which might change the perception how we are standing on in the battle to cancer. And as the things uh, usually are, uh, they are, if you look from the right angle, and if you ask the right questions, everything is very simple. So I hope that at the end of this lecture, perhaps we can find somebody who would like to do the decisive trial test to prove this, because since this still there are some few data only, we can say, and perhaps we can give a valid cure to cancer. A theology of diseases, of course, this is very well known to you. It's not a single, single factor, they are many. And more and more it becomes evident, oh, sorry, I have to learn, that uh, environmental factors uh, play a role not only in aging and in uh, all degenerative diseases, but also in cancer, which is the main topic of, of my lecture today. Uh, Bill Anton showed this, and uh, this is also nothing controversial about that. We know that. And toxic and transition metals, which are in environment, but also uh, in our mouths, for example, or in smoking, will do all these things. Chronic inflammation is uh, the factor of aging, factor of all degenerative diseases, and uh, a factor of cancer. What is somehow virtually ignored by mainstream medicine is that causes of inflammations are not only viruses, microbes, parasites, but also could be metals or other environmental contaminants. Uh, we just started to look on pesticides role. I will just mention a little bit on that. It's not as simple, but uh, Metals are the ones which can be easily identified and measured, and also inflammation due to metals can be easily measured. So that's, this is the model system, you can say so. Uh, I have no possibility to go through 10 or 15 years of hard work, which several groups and mine have done, showing increased reactivity and now we are talking about immunologic reactivity. Disregard everything about toxicity now. We are now in the immune world. We are looking on T cell, a special type of allergy, which is called delay type hypersensitivity. Forget the serum test, antibodies are not there. The only way how you could look on these type of allergy are through T cells. I will go back into that. Again, uh, what is in common to all these diseases are actually that they are of immunologic origin. Either they have so-called allergy origin or autoimmunity origin. And you know about what it means, what autoimmunity means. It means that the body's white blood cells, soldiers will fight their own cells. The only problem is that these cells, own cells, might be also changed by environmental contaminants. They might also have heavy metal sitting on their surface. And by this, immune cells then will try to kill off or remove the foreign substances. And by this, they will, of course, kill their own cells. This is nothing new. This is so-called altered cell hypothesis by Geichmann. It has been around for years, and it fits very well with this. Inflammation, of course, can lead to cancer. Uh, this is one of the many, many different papers showing and indicating that if you have a genetic susceptibility, uh, the genes for inflammatory cytokines will correlate with the occurrence of gastric cancer when you have infection with Helicobacter pylori. So this is nothing, again, which is somehow new. The new thing is that now we are putting it together with inflammation due to metals and other contaminants. So to be realized that 
it's not so simple to live in metal free and I was really enjoying Gary's of course comments that I couldn't keep myself from because he really talked from my heart as well and uh, this is what really makes it so, so interesting that completely independently you come into the same conclusions and you p support each other's data. So please do not forget that it's not only uh, mercury in the fish like here, methyl mercury, uh, thimerosal which is additive in vaccines for children, uh, you also have a major exposure to metal pigments through cosmetics like, for example, cadmium or lead through lipstick. So <laughs> women, especially the ones which has autoimmune diseases and problems, look into the issue. You are beautiful even without these things. And, of course, orthopedic implants, and the major bit is in the mouth. And I'm sorry to say I will shatter your illusion that gold is inert because it's not. So people might be seriously has affected by gold fillings, so-called gold fillings. Gold is very soft, so there is nothing like gold, pure gold, in the mouth. It's always alloys containing bad, bad, bad things, like, for example, palladium. And believe it or not, even indium, which is highly toxic, or beryllium, is in our mouth. So... Uh, I have been uh, infatuated by this idea that metals might not only cause cancer in animals, like it has been definitely shown in several, uh, many, many animal experiments and has been peer-reviewed, published, but also in man, because we really are animals as well, no doubt about that. And uh, in Prague, where I work, people are a little bit open-minded. So I was able to, to get hold of breast cancer's dish from, uh, from uh, the Oncological Faculty in Prague, and I asked Dr. Gruya Ionescu to look on the content of metals in a, a normal and uh, a normal biopsies, which we got uh, from, uh, from the reduction of the breast, and from patients with breast cancer. It's not a large study, but it's, it's the first study which has been published by this way in the supplement which, which I gave to Gary, and you can have a PDF of the paper if you are interested. And uh, not to my big surprise, but anyway, uh, we have found significant accumulation of metals in the breast tissue compared, and it was done by two different techniques, so there is no reason to, to, to see that this is really evidence-based. The most interesting, I would say, is that there were huge concentrations of iron, nickel, chromium, and also other bad things. This is how it looked for PPBs, and uh, these are really, really high numbers. And uh, this is for cadmium, much less. Nevertheless, always healthy patients, the red ones, are much less than the cancer patients. And this is in uh, other scale. Here you have it in, again in PPB, and you can see the huge accumulation and the clear-cut significance. I will get back to this because it explains all this data of Walter Blumer and uh, I can tell you that I work in Switzerland, I really try to get hold of this Walter because I could tell him, look, you were completely right, but it was not just cards, you completely disregarded dental things and that's, that was the problem, you didn't know that. Uh, this is a new, very exciting part which shows that lymph nodes and the cancer patients can also be screened for metals. So not only that you can see that the cancer biopsy contains and what it contains, you can also see what is accumulated in the nearby adjuncted lymph nodes. In this case, this patient has a prostate and I am dying to get hold of some oncologists who could give me the sting, things because, as you know, prostate and cancer have the same genes. So I am absolutely sure, and it has also been published for cadmium, that in prostate we do find some nasty metals. 